All right, it is Pup here. It is Pup, Little Pup, whatever you want to call me, AJ Styles. But uh, we're back with another video today. Um, shoot, uh, I mean, I've kind of been haste. I've been wasting my time, but whatever. We're back with a video. We're gonna do introduction to Egypt. Uh, this isn't the spirituality part of it. This is just an introduction to basically what it's about. Um, very cool, very cool. I'll have some insights and comments about it. Um, that's pretty much it. Also, once again, I'll say again, this is a first. This is like one of my first videos. This will change probably in the future. Um, I'm like, what do you believe in? What do you believe in? I, hey, man. I'm, I'm a little bit of this, a little bit of that, man. But I think it's cool. We're, we're just gonna we're just gonna go into it. We're gonna we're gonna see what these Egyptians are doing, man. And then I'm gonna give my insight about it. Okay. So we're just play two videos here. These aren't very long. We're not watching an hour long video. It's just. Let's see what's happening, man, all right? The ancient Egyptian civilization lasted for over 3,000 years and became one of the most powerful and iconic civilizations in history. At its height, ancient Egypt's empire stretched as far north as modern-day Syria and as far south as today's Sudan. But long before it was an empire, Ancient Egypt was a series of small, independent city-states that bloomed along North Africa's Nile River. The city-states were divided into two regions and named according to the flow of the Nile. Upper Egypt in the south, which was upstream, and Lower Egypt in the north, which was downstream. By about 3100 BC, the two halves united, thereby creating one Egyptian state that lasted for millennia. The reign of this civilization can be divided into three major periods of prosperity called the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms, and two periods of instability in between, called the First and Second Intermediate Periods. Guiding the Egyptian people All right, so let's was a stop succession- here. I'm going to stop many times, but um, I'll just say this. So you guys know I am not racist at all. You know, I'm, I'm completely, I am completely against uh, division. I'm against that. Um, so what what my main thing is going to be to break down in this is the fact that um, I believe that Egypt was a multi-ethnic ethnic community. They strive, they work together, they they had ups and downs. Um, and we'll talk about that more later. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say that right off the bat. I am not racist at all, okay? Thank you. The Egyptian people was a succession of about 300 rulers, often referred to as pharaohs. Pharaoh, which means great house in Egyptian, was never the ruler's formal title. It only became synonymous with the ruling individual in modern times, thanks to its use in the Hebrew Bible. These rulers, who were not always men, nor Egyptian, were considered protectors of the people and served as divine liaisons between humanity and the hundreds of gods they worshipped. After the rulers passed away, ancient Egyptians believed they then became gods. To prepare their journey into the afterlife, the rulers constructed elaborate tombs, including the Great Pyramids at Giza and underground mausoleums in the Valley of the Kings. Rulers filled their tombs with all the items they could need in the afterlife, including gold, jewelry, food, drink, and even pets. Preparing for this journey to the gods also involved mummifying one's body. The deceased's corpse was embalmed, wrapped in hundreds of yards of linen, and placed inside the tomb so the body could be reanimated in the afterlife. To this day, structures like the Great Pyramids are a testament to the role of religion in ancient Egyptians' lives. But they also represent I mean, an look innovative... At that. That, that is just like... That's insane, man. That's insane. I, I don't think... I don't think a, a chaotic, disordered person... Um, I, I don't think a, a divided group of people could have done this. Like it's, That's just impossible. That's just impossible. Let's keep going cultural might of the Egyptian people. Innovations in mathematics and written language in particular propelled their civilization to success. Math, specifically measurement mathematics, 
helped Egyptians understand and harness their world with numbers like no other civilization had before. They developed a new form of measurement called the cubit. It was used to design massive structures such as the Great Pyramid with remarkable geometrical precision. The Egyptians also measured time. By combining mathematics with astronomy, they established a 24-hour division to the day and created a solar calendar, which was the first dating system in history to feature 365 days in one year. Lastly, Egyptians developed methods to measure and survey land around the Nile River. These civil engineering feats made way for the construction of dams, canals, and irrigation systems that helped farming and agriculture to flourish in the Nile Valley. In addition to mathematical concepts, the ancient Egyptians also created written languages to describe the world around them. The oldest and probably most well-known of these is hieroglyphic writing. This system was developed around 3150 BC during the Old Kingdom and has over 700 pictorial characters. It was used to inscribe monuments and pottery and predominantly served a decorative or ceremonial purpose. Soon after, another ancient form of writing, called hieratic, developed out of the hieroglyphic system. It was a form of cursive that was written in ink and served a more functional purpose. Unlike its more formal predecessor, hieratic was written on another ancient Egyptian innovation, papyrus. Papyrus was a type of paper derived from the papyrus plant, which grew plentifully along the Nile River. This medium gave the ancient Egyptians a new avenue of communication and record keeping that allowed their civilization's administrative skill to grow and their culture to spread for thousands of years. As with all great empires, ancient Egypt came to an end. It was eventually conquered after a series of invasions, including those by the Persian Empire in the 4th century BC and the Roman Empire around 30 and we'll BC. talk about this more later. I have a uh, book here. Let me show you guys. I, should, I, I said I wouldn't pause the video, I know. I have a book here. It goes over almost every dynasty in the kingdom. So let's show you here. I get it open. Uh, hold on a second. Let me... I don't want to waste time. Ah, one hand. So we have every every period. So in this, it's it claims it to be not claims it. It puts it into a kingdom of seven dynasties, um, which I guess consists of old, middle, and new. Um, but that's pretty cool. So let's keep going. I'll talk about I'll talk about this more later once we get past this video. Not many civilizations can claim a lifespan of over three thousand years let alone one that made vast cultural contributions that still resonate in modern times. Ancient Egypt, with its linguistic and mathematical innovations, spirituality and religion, and extensive political and military might, set a high standard for all civilizations that followed. Very nice, very nice. Shout out to National, Ge National Geographic. Hopefully I don't get like Copyright, I don't think that happens, but, ow. Uh, that's the one video, so what you got from that, that's basically just a quick introduction of Egypt, what it's gone through. Um, it didn't go into great depth, but that's good, because I don't want the video to be that long, because I, I still want to get on some other stuff. Um, do not look at my lights. Um, Have you ever wondered why Egypt so what's is I was, often... What I was saying, so if you kind of look up Egypt and spirituality, for the most part, you're just going to find most people, maybe the same skin color as me, okay, I'll say that, claiming that it's our religion, it's our land, it's our mind, 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 just black people, only black, black, black. And when I read the, the when I read the, the, how do you say it, hieroglyphics, when I read that, when I read these books, when I look at these pictures that were actually in the, the tombs and in the museums, you see that it's a, it's a multal, a multal, it's a, multi-ethnical race that's that's had dominion over this kingdom so let's th this video kind of goes in a little bit more of that um it's just two minutes it won't be that long so let's watch it 
Have you ever wondered why Egypt is often referred to as a diverse society? Picture the fertile Nile Valley in ancient times, bustling with a blend of cultures. The different groups of people were among the many that called Egypt home, each their unique customs, traditions, and influences, adding vibrant threads to the rich tapestry of ancient Egyptian society. This mix of cultures is an important part of Egypt's history. The roots of Egypt's diversity can be traced back to its ancient past. But how did Egypt keep its mix of cultures through the ages? Well, a story of people moving in and out and cultural exchanges. Let's wind the clock back a few millennia to the Greeks under Alexander the Great. Didn't so just come to conquer. This is very important what he said here. He says that the Greeks, so this is after the Persians, there was all, there's, there was fighting um, in, the, in the mix. I mean, Egypt, was all, Egypt wasn't always a nation that was just united. I mean, if you watched the, the past video, it even said that they had to unify their state and get back together like that. So it, it's not just Alexander, it's not just the Persians and the Romans that are doing this. It's that there's still fighting happening currently. Not currently, but currently at the time it was still happening. Let's keep going. Conquer. They brought their language, their arts, their philosophy. Fast forward a bit and here come the Romans infusing their architectural prowess and legal systems into the Egyptian way of, then we have the Arabs who introduced Islam and the Arabic language, shaping the religious and linguistic landscape of Egypt. The Ottomans brought their unique arts and architecture, further enriching the Egyptian ethos. And let's not forget the Europeans who left their imprint through modern education systems and technologies. Each group, in their own way, added threads to the rich tapestry of Egyptian culture, creating a colorful blend of diverse influences. I mean, look at that. Like, we had, Thus, you've had times where you had Muslims there, Islam, you had some Europeans, you had some Persians, which, I mean, obviously they were fighting most of the time. You had some Romans, you had, obviously, the Nubians, which were probably African descent of people. It's just amazing. It's just like almost, uh, this was like where all the cool kids came, I guess. This was, this was the cool kid party. I don't know why I wasn't invited, but shoot, let's keep going. Egypt's history of people moving in and out has resulted in a unique mix of cultures. So, what does this mean for Egypt today? Well, it's clear that the echoes of its multi-ethnic past reverberate in the present. The different languages spoken, from Arabic to Nubian and beyond, paint a picture of a mix of cultures. The variety of religious practices from Islam to Christianity and local beliefs speaks volumes of its inclusive ethos. Different cultural traditions from music to cuisine further enrich this lively nation. Therefore, modern-day Egypt is a testament to its rich multi-ethnic history. In conclusion, Egypt's diverse nature is not just a label but a reflection of its rich and varied past. The many different groups of people culminate in today's Egypt. You enjoyed this journey through Egypt's diverse past and present. Don't love forget it. to subscribe for it. more Absolutely insights. Absolutely love it. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying this now. This is important because if you look this up on the internet, you might fall into some rabbit holes of people just, you know, I'm not just going to say black people. There's also people that are like, hey, well, the Egyptians weren't black. They were white. They were white. Yeah. And it's like you guys fight over silly stuff. Like, like that's silly. It's, it's so silly to fight over. Um, but that's pretty much it. And then I had this book. I had a couple of things. This is a very good book. If you want to get something like, I think, 20 bucks, you can get it. Um, and it kind of just talks about, it goes it goes a lot in depth of Egypt. But I'm, I'm going to find some cool points in it. Let me pause so I don't. All right, so I'm not going to be able to show you the actual book and read it at the same time. But this, this one, it says, one of the most important moments of Egypt was around 3000 BCE when it became a unified state. Okay, so Egypt wasn't always um, unified. There were, there were times where it was kind of going back and forth, back and forth. I think that's pretty cool. Let's keep going. Once again, I can't really turn the whole thing around. But, I mean, I'm seeing, like, you're seeing, like, you know, dark-skinned people, light-skinned people, different colored people. And this isn't even, this isn't even at the, the uh, Roman, the Roman Empire, not the Roman Empire, but the part when the Roman and Persians came. This is, this is in the Old Kingdom. So we're, we're, we're still seeing this. This this diverse of ethnic race, which is just, I just love it. Okay, let's keep going. I, need it. I love this part too. This one says, uh, "Family, uh, powerful woman." Um, this one was Tetershi, Tetershi. I can't really say it, but we actually had woman kings 
Owen queens and kings that actually ruled over some of the parts of Egypt, which is very cool. You don't see that a lot of places. You see most times, um, you know, I'm all for like masculinity and stuff, but most times you don't see things like uh, putting women in high positions of authority. Um, it's kind of looked down on most times in our society. Um, but the Egyptians really didn't care about that. They were like, hey, man, I mean, if they can do, they, they may be physically weaker than us, but they, they can definitely do some of the stuff. I mean, this part right here, this is, uh, has the butt? Has the butt? It says, uh, queen becomes a king. Has the butt. Look at that. That's the actual paint. That's the actual sculpture. Very cool. Very cool. This is a good book. You guys should get it. Go ahead and pause. All right. I need to hurry up because this video is getting pretty long. Um, so this is, I mean, I skipped over a whole bunch of stuff. I'm, not, I'm just trying to give it a, I'm just trying to give it a broad, my mic is right there. Expression. I'm just trying to give a broad example or a broad introduction to this. Um, but once again, I was saying, people will always say that the Romans, the Persians, they destroyed Egypt. They took it over. They, just, they you know, um, so this part, let's, let's read this. I'm going to just go a little bit into this book. Um, the Ptolemies. Um, after the breakup of, of Alexander, <laughs> after the breakup of Alexander the Great's empire, um, his general Ptolemy took control of Egypt in 305 BCE. Ptolemy had declared himself king, um, and Ptolemy. I, I'm trying to just get a general thing. Basically, Ptolemy ruled Egypt for a little bit. Um, forcibly, okay. Forcibly, Ptolemy ruled Egypt for a little bit. He came, conquered, was killing people. F supposedly, supposedly. Um, now here comes Alexander the Great, right here. We got Alexander the Great. Um, so this part says the Macedonian king Alexander the Great had invaded Egypt and liberated the country from its Persian oppressors. So, Alexander the Great, this guy, he didn't, I mean, maybe, obviously there was probably some killing, but he did this in a way that was uh, liberating Egypt and trying to get them back to their original, whatever they were doing. Because if you even read before this, I'm not trying to read the whole thing, but it says that they were trying to convert the whole land into Christianity, and that's kind of where Egypt ended. But, but, but uh, not Ptolemy, Alexander the Great came and liberated them from that state. So that's just a little bit. So there's a lot happening. Um, there's a lot happening. But that's pretty much it. I mean, it's not. Uh, that's pretty much it. This is just the introduction to Egypt. Uh, not any time really introduction. It's 20 minutes long. But that's it, man. Uh, any questions, comments, put them in the chat. Uh, that's it. <laughs> cool. Bye.